Spider-Man Hostile Takeover by David Liss Chapter 2 The construction site was at 46th Street and 9th Avenue, just where Andy said it would be. Spider-Man half expected to be an empty lot or a supermarket, maybe even a giant hole in the ground. Instead, there was a skeleton of a building that rose up 20 or so stories. So far, the kid's info was right on target. He circled around it a few times to make sure there weren't sentries, or even just a bunch of guys with guns. But the place looked about as deserted as... What was the right metaphor? A construction site after work hours. Yep, that sounded right. None of which meant Andy was wrong. It could still be a staging area. And if the opportunity to disrupt one of the Scorpion's operations presented itself, there was no way Spider-Man was going to pass it up. Before heading in, he tried again to call MJ. He'd made an attempt after leaving the dock, but had gone straight to voicemail. Same result. Me again, he said. Just wanted to hear your voice before Valiant and throwing myself into danger. But I know you're busy, so it's cool. He hoped his tone conveyed that he wasn't really serious, but also that he was a little serious. Convincing himself that the construction site was empty, he landed in a central area on a lower floor, one that looked reasonably solid, and began to look around. First, he checked the areas closest to the ground. Tools, piles of concrete, blocks, and rebar. Equipment for pouring cement. No sign that it was being used for criminal purposes, but every sign that it was being used for construction, and recently too. Why would Scorpion stash his gear in an active work site? Maybe Andy had been wrong after all. Then he started getting a feeling. Not a spider sense feeling, but a regular old something's not right feeling. It seemed reasonable that a thief might sell him a line, give him a bigger fish to go after as a way of getting off the hook. But Andy didn't seem like thinking on his feet was a particular strength, and the information about the building site, about Scorpion, had been pretty specific. Webbing up to the next floor, he looked around for signs of any nefarious activity. Nothing he wouldn't expect to find at an ordinary non-villainous building under construction. It looked like this was going to be a waste of time, but he still intended to check things out floor by floor. He had to be sure. Climbing the girders, he moved to the next floor up, which he figured would be just as empty and non-evil as the last. Then, he heard something. A clatter, like metal falling on metal. And it was coming from further up. Way further up. He also felt something, a faint prickling at the back of his neck. His spider sense was tingling. That meant he was getting closer to danger. While danger wasn't a good thing, it did suggest that he hadn't been outsmarted by a criminal in training. Moving to the outside of the building, he began to climb making almost no noise. As he approached the roof, his spider sense began buzzing more aggressively. Just then, his phone rang with a call from MJ. After trying to reach her all night, he didn't want to ignore her. She'd understand if he did, of course. She was great that way. Mostly, he just wanted to hear her voice. Hey, he said as he slowly pulled himself up onto the roof. That's your going into action voice, she said, doing what he thought was a pretty fair imitation of his going into action voice. Everything okay? The tingling increased, telling him the bad guys probably knew he was there, which meant they were lying in ambush. It was still relatively low level, so they probably weren't going to pose much of a problem. He could talk and fight at the same time. Just to be safe, he said, Yeah, but I'm going to smack down a bunch of thugs and chances are they're armed. If I stop talking, it's not something you said. Unless you say something totally insane and I have no response to it. MJ laughed. Peter loved the sound of her laugh, even after all this time. Well, I can call you back, she said wryly. No, this is going to be pretty routine, he said. And I've been trying to reach you all night. The 16 voicemails gave that away. 12 tops. Where are you? MJ had said something, but it was drowned out by the sound of gunfire. He was already up in the air, shooting out a web and contorting himself to avoid the bullets without thinking about what he was doing. His enhanced spider reflexes, plus eight years of experience at not getting shot, made it pure instinct. While spinning in the air, Peter took stock of the situation. Four guys, each with firearms. They jerked their heads left and right, as if he had vanished into thin air. These idiots didn't know to look up. 
It was almost too easy. You still there, MJ asked? Yeah, he said. The action started. There's no reason we have to talk this second, she said. I don't want you to get hurt just because... Oh, please, he said, cutting her off. It's not a problem. He pointed his web shooter at one of the gunmen, whose wrist was then attached to the wall behind him. The gun fell harmlessly to the ground. That's one down! He landed behind another guy and shot out both the web shooters, pressing him face first against the wall. His features were all squished. You should see these guys. It's hilarious. Using the suit's built-in camera, he snapped a picture. I'll show you later. Something to look forward to, she replied sarcastically. As she did, another assailant came around the corner and raised his gun. A quick web and the guy was hoisted into the air, attached to an overhang. The cops might have a hard time getting that one down. Well, I'm glad you're having fun, MJ said. And don't take this the wrong way, but listening to you narrate your exploits isn't what I need to be doing right now. But I'm using new tech, he protested. Girlfriends are supposed to love it when their guys show off their new gadgets, he added. Aren't they? MJ laughed. Call me back when you're done playing. Hold on, I'm just getting the last one right now. He's creeping around in the dark like being low means that I won't be able to find him. It's adorbs. I'm hanging up in 30 seconds. I only need 10, the web slinger said. Then he shot out webbing and incapacitated the last of the quartet. I'll call you back, he said abruptly, and he cut the connection. His spider sense went off like a tingling explosion. It wasn't exactly an 11 on a 10 scale, but it was easily an 8. These guys weren't the threat. They were the bait. And Spider-Man had just blundered into a trap. 